Hey folks, welcome back to Tech Tech and More Tech. I'm Carlo, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to integrate Z-Wave with your home assistant. As always, if you prefer a written version, head on over to techtechandmoretech.com or check the link in the description, just below that like button. Now about last year, I did a whole series on getting Home Assistant set up and running, and one of the videos was getting Z-Wave integration up and running. If you follow that video and you have everything working, you don't really have to do anything now and nothing's changed, but the existing Z-Wave integration has now been deprecated, meaning it's no longer supported. They've changed it all together. And there's a new Z-Wave integration called Z-Wave JS, which is a little bit simpler, a little bit easier to use. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to set that up. My Home Assistant setup is on a Home Assistant Blue um, hardware and I use a Nortec A2B, SB something, Z-Wave, Zigbee, uh, USB stick. Um, so if you use different hardware, things might be a little bit different from you. Uh, for Raspberry Pis, it's gonna be exactly the same. And if you just have like a single um, Z-Wave USB stick, it's gonna be pretty much the same. I'll kind of walk you through all of that. Um, if you're using Home Assistant, Home Assistant through like a Docker or something like that, through like a uh, Intel NUC or something like that. I don't have any experience uh, doing that, so this video may not be super helpful to you because I know there's different ways of accessing the USB uh, ports and stuff like that within the, that kind of integration. But for those of you that have Raspberry Pis, which is pretty much most people that run Home Assistant, this will be pretty straightforward and easy to follow. There are three things we're going to cover. I'm going to cover integrating a Z-Wave integration completely from scratch. So you just plugged in the stick and you don't have anything set up yet. I will also show how to transition from your current Z-Wave setup to the new Z-Wave JS, which is super easy. And then also I'll show you how to add new devices and remove devices from your Z-Wave network. This is all gonna be done on my computer. So you're not gonna see much of me, just my voice. So let's jump into the computer now. Alrighty, so if you are brand new and you just set up your home assistant and you don't really have anything connected, obviously the first step is to actually physically insert the USB Z-Wave stick or module into your uh, home assistant hardware. So USB stick, module, Raspberry Pi, whatever it is, and it should detect it. And you'll know this by going to supervisor and then system and you got host. At the bottom of host, you got these three little dots and you got hardware. Tap on that. And then you've got this huge amount of list. Doesn't matter. What you want to find is TTY USB zero and TTY USB one. Now I've got zero and one because the Nortec stick that I have has both a Z-Wave and a Zigbee in one stick. If you only have a Z-Wave stick, then it's going to be probably just TTY USB zero. Um, but if you have the same stick as I do, the Nortec one. USB zero is the Z-Wave allocation by default and USB one is the Zigbee allocation by default. If you wanna learn how to get the Zigbee integration done, there's a video in the description below. It's very straightforward, but right now we're gonna focus on this. So we've got TTY USB zero. We're gonna see where it says device path. We're just gonna copy that. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna to go to configuration, integrations, and then add integration. Search, and you're gonna get Z-Wave JS, and select that. And then it's gonna and then it's gonna ask, do you want to use a Z-Wave JS super, supervisor add-on? Yep, check that and hit on submit. Now, mine immediately found it. It's gonna ask you first with a little pop-up to basically uh, select the device path. And that's where you're gonna paste the TTY USB zero device path that we just copied. Now, if you haven't added anything to it before, then this is gonna be empty. You're not actually gonna have anything because, well, you haven't added anything yet. So I don't care about all these. I'm just gonna put them in the control room just for the time being. And I'm gonna show you how to actually add a new one. So if you want to actually add a new one, your Z-Wave JS at integration, you click on configure. And then we're going to go to add node. Node, select this and start inclusion. And 
basically while the inclusion is running, you kind of have to do them one by one. Again, another reason why having a mobile device is definitely preferred. So again, we can just go to start inclusion and then walk over to your device that you'd like to add to your Z-Wave network. For me, this light, and I'm just gonna turn it on. There we go. We now have five nodes. Basically that one device has now been re-added. And then you're just gonna have to go through and kind of do that for every single device you have. Not ideal, but it is the way that you kind of have to do it. Again, if you have your phone, you can go to the homeassistant.local um, URL page, do it in your browser, and then just walk around to each device and do it, and it'll be really, really quick and easy. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to basically transfer your Z-Wave integration. So as you can see down here, I have the original Z-Wave deprecated integration. Honestly, if you have this and you don't actually wanna switch over, you don't have to. Mine's been working just fine for months now. Um, so unless you're adding something new or you wanna change things up, you don't really have to do this, but if you do want to, here's how you're gonna do it. One thing I'd recommend first is if you click on your entities, your existing entities, Maybe just take a note or like a picture of your entity IDs um, because some of them will tell you like 46, 20, 01, uh, and then some of the other ones. It just makes it a little bit easier to identify what your individual devices are because the unfortunate part is, or if you go to devices as well, it'll tell you. The reason being is if you have a lot of lights and stuff like that, it's gonna be kind of a pain to go through and figure out exactly which one every single one is. So this should hopefully help you save a little bit of time. But anyways, uh, just like with adding it from new, you need to find out what your uh, what the pathway is for the Z-Wave stick, usually just USB zero. So because we've already seen that, we're just gonna click on add integration as always. Z-Wave JS, submit, and success. So because I already, already done it before, the pathway that it asked for was already there, and all you had to do was type in TTY slash USB zero. So this is what I was talking about. So a quick co combo stick, this is my the actual stick, so I'm gonna put that in my control room. And this is where it gets tricky because I've got the paddle switch, another paddle switch, a dimmer, a dimmer. Unless you know exactly where these are, they're all kind of the same, so you kind of just have to guess, which is not ideal. You can put everything in like a default room and then go around and kind of figure it out, but not the end of the world and done. So those are now installed, as you can see. Z-Wave JS, they're all right there. Here, this one, you can just disable it and things will work just fine. You just have to restart your uh, home assistant and then you can go through your entities and give them new names and things like that. It says unavailable, let's go ahead and restart real quick then. Okay, it's restarting, let's go to integrations, devices, and here they are, they all show up. Now you can click on them individually and give them names and stuff like that. Uh, that's the only downside, you have to kind of have to go through manually and type in those names. A little bit annoying, but not the end of the world, kind of is what it is. Now, if you want to, let's say, remove a Z-Wave node, the way you go that is you click on configure and it takes you to this screen and you hit on remove node and going to start exclusion. Now that is started, we can go over to one of our Z-Wave switches. This one in one of my bedrooms and we're just gonna tap on down and hopefully, this is why having an iPad or something is a little bit easier we can go back and we can see if it worked. Yep, it says node three has been removed from your network. Close, perfect. So there you have it, Z-Wave JS integration with Home Assistant. Super straightforward, super easy to get. And honestly for me, my Z-Wave integrations have been super rock solid for the years that I've had them uh, prior to this version. So hopefully this is kind of one of those integrations where you set up once, you forget all about it, you never touch it ever again. And there you have it, super easy. As always, if you liked the video, be sure to like and subscribe button for plenty more videos to come. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get to them as best I can. Until next time, see ya.